Oh my goodness, this is crazy. This is driving me nuts. All right. This is it. This is we're going. I'm going from now on. Let me know if you guys are here. Uh, I was having I was having um, problems before. I got off the Wi-Fi. I want to thank you guys for being here today. Uh, today it's it's working. Awesome. Today I'm talking to you. Uh, thank you guys for coming in. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about Motivation Mondays and 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 how to get motivated. But you have to realize I want to leave. I want to give you some tips about getting motivated in general. Uh, some of you don't know who I am. Yes, how to fight? How to fight? How to fight being discouraged with a Samsung? Patty, you are right. I was discouraged, but I decided to try something different. Uh, the beautiful Low helped me out. Um, hey, how you doing, Destiny Exotic? Uh, the beautiful Low helped me out. Told me I should try this without Wi-Fi. I'm not on Wi-Fi right now, so I'm gonna make this as quick as possible so I don't have any problems. I want to make sure I get the message out tonight and help and, and work with you guys. Thank you so. Hey, Aziz, this is my man. Thank you so much for uh, sharing this with people. There's a few things I need to ask from you. I need you guys to give me a bunch of hearts. I need you guys to share this with your friends. Please do me that do me that favor as I, as I try to share some of the things that I've experienced in my life. And uh, I want to make sure I get that, help you guys with that. So the key is very simple. A lot of times when Monday comes around, you see a lot of things about Motivation Monday. People are worried and concerned about Motivation Monday, right? Or mo- uh, mo- Mondays in general. So there are two camps that you'll see, whether on social, maybe in your life. The first camp will be people who are complaining about Mondays. They say they have a case of the Mondays, Mondays suck, they're complaining, complaining. The other half of the people are, are, are in the motivational space. They understand much better without Wi-Fi. I agree. Thank you. Um, the motivational space, they're thinking about motivation. To them, motivation is important. And they're very concerned about, uh, they understand the importance of planting seeds in their garden of life, in their garden of dreams, right? So for me, I want to show you who I am. My name is Abong Eka. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a CPA by trade. I'm a speaker, uh, life and business strategist. I'm also the Prince of Pricing, where I help small businesses, uh, entrepreneurs, and coaching, and people in that space um, to get them uh, to get them to a place where they could uh, increase, set their pricing, and then increase their prices so they can maximize their profits. But as a result of that, yeah, my book, Start Me Up. I'm gonna tell you in a second how you can get a copy of that signed copy from me for free. All you gotta do is pay for the shipping and handling because I gotta send it somehow. Um, so I got some extra books. But uh, real quick. Oh, here's my book again. Hey, The Big Dreamer, I saw you in another scope earlier. Thank you so much for checking it out. Um, this, it was an Amazon bestseller. Uh, it retails for $15.99. Um, I don't do one-on-one yet. Uh, I, I will be soon. In the next week or so, I'll have everything in place. I'll be able to set up the one-on-one stuff. Um, and, and that's basically where I plan on going with my coaching right now as well. Uh, right now, it's just people. I do one-on-one, but, it, but in person. Uh, yes, this, this is a hot, hard copy of the book. But don't worry. No, stay tuned, uh, uh, Destiny Exotic. Um, I'm, I got you. I got you. Just give me give me a little bit of time to set up the, the systems in place, and we'll be able, be able to do like Skype stuff or whatever else once I got everything in place. So, so a lot of what I do is not just about motivation. It's about because I think there's a difference between motivation and inspiration. And I've said this before, but motivation and inspiration are two different things. The first thing is motivation is a spark. So if you get if you have a if you have a match or a firecracker, it's something that it gets you. Expl- it's an explosion, right? And you get excited. You get excited for about a day or two. But what happens is you get so excited that it fizzles out, just like a firecracker. You go, you go to, um, you go to, you go to uh, uh, Fourth of July or you know July first if you're in Canada or any other memo- days that you guys celebrate. And you, you use firecrackers and, and some type of explosion, even though it's a huge explosion, it fizzles because it's small and it's short. The difference is though with inspiration. Inspiration is the fuse. It's the kindling. It's a consistent slow burn. You know why you need the consistent slow burn? Because when you wake up one day and you don't feel like getting out of bed to go to work on your dream, that inspiration is what keeps you going. Hey, Patrick, you know, that is it. Execution is worship. So that explo- and that inspiration is what keeps you going. What, what keeps you going, part of the inspiration is your why. Why are you doing what you do? Why did you wake up in the morning to chase this dream? There's something else that's deeper than, than a, a, a particular goal or result. If you're chasing the money, that's why people who chase just the money aren't necessarily happy. So the key is there has to be something else that sustains that, a slow burn over time. Sometimes your why may be to take care of people. Maybe your why is to share your gifts, exchange value with people in the marketplace. Maybe your why could be to help a community. Maybe your why is your family, your family's relying on you, and your ability to have happiness and bring money into your life can help you know, your family, right? Because then your sons and your kids and your daughters and everyone else who, who respects and loves you 
will, will look up to you as an example. Everybody has that as some type, some type of mentor. So the bigger thing I want to talk about when it, came to, when it comes to motivation is understanding that you need to commit to the price of success. And I say this often, that you have to commit to the price of success. Success is going to cost a lot. It's going to cost more than you think it is. It's going to cost more than, than whatever it is that you want to accomplish. You think it's as simple as writing some letter or writing some emails or whatever else, but you don't realize it's at times you're going to, you're going to have to write hundreds of them. So when I, when I talk about my book at, at nauseum, when I, before I got this book deal, I got, this is an actual book. I got a book deal to, to write this book with a, with a, with a publisher. It took me two years and over 250 to 300 emails and letters to literary agents and, and calling people and connecting to publishers and writing you know, over 10 to 15 different book proposals. Now you got to realize this. A book proposal is as much as 35,000 words to 50,000 words, depending on what the idea is. It's not as simple as sending an email saying, I think this is a good book and everybody would want to buy it. Nobody cares about that. The, the, the publishers don't care about what you're trying to talk about. right? What they care about is, can I sell this book? Everything is strictly economics. So, having exactly, Patrick, having a persistence is key. Thank you so much, Destiny, but having a persistence is key. But you also have to understand it was a bigger why. So I'm going to tell you what my why was for this, which gave me the motivation to keep going. The first thing is, I've always had dreams and, and visions. I believe I can do anything. If you met me, you know my life. I've done so many things in life that people, when I tell people these, my stories, they can't believe it. They always ask me. This happens to me all the time. What haven't you done? The reason that is is because I realize that life is the life that I have now is what I have now. I don't know what's happening later. So if I have what I have now and I have my faculties, why not do what I can to bring you know glory to, to you know to, to God and glory to everybody else who 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 looks up to me or who's in my life? So that's kind of how I act. So so my why was two things. The first why was I wanted to get a book out because it's something that is a dream I've had for for like at least five six years. The second why was. I had a I had a friend, especially a lot of people, you people who are business owners. I have a friend about four, about uh, three four years ago. She wanted to start a business, and so in her mind, on, on create uh, let's see, publishing on Create Space. Can I still get a hard? Yes, you can. This, this is this is yeah yeah. You can still get a hard copy, man. Um, the hard copy basically this is this is a uh, paperback. You can get this. This is big. You can get this in Barnes and Nobles. You can get it at Amazon. Um, you can get it from me for free if you pay for shipping and handling. And I'll give you the link in a second. But I had a friend who literally wanted to start a business. And I used to write business plans back in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s during the dot-com. And so she knew that. And she asked me, can you write a business plan for me? And I said, no, I no longer do that. Uh, you know, things have changed. I do something else now. And so she said, so she said, okay. I said, look, how about this? You go write, the, you go write your business plan and I'll review it for you. And I'll give you some, some pointers and some feedback. She said, fine. So she went, came back to me nine months later. Nine months. And I told her verbatim that you literally could have had a child in the nine months you spent writing a business plan that nobody was going to read. If you talk to people, nobody reads it. Everybody thinks says it's a nice story to, to say that I wrote a business plan. But if you ask a lot of people who've written them, nobody reads the business plan. The banks don't read them. Investors don't read them. I have experience pitching investors. I have experience pitching angels. I have experience pitching banks. None of them read any of that stuff. Um, oh, that's awesome, big dreamer. You're tired of 39, 10 years ago. That's awesome, man. Um, you're living your life. I appreciate that. That's amazing. That's something that people can, can resonate with. So that was the impetus for my why when I wrote this book, because I knew there were a lot more people out there who had ideas for businesses and dreams, and they were wasting their time writing business plans. Right? And this basically focuses on the four major areas that you need to focus on when you want to start a business, the four major areas. And if you focus on those four areas, it'll increase your likelihood right, of, getting, of, of actually starting the business, getting your first customer. Uh, why don't you? So why don't you need them, Candy B? Very simple. This, and everything I tell you guys in life, this is not, it's not theory. I read a lot of books, but a lot of stuff that I tell you in life, when you see, watch my scopes, is coming from things that I've experienced. So again, I've pitched. Uh, I've pitched everything. You know, uh, most people haven't wrote, a, haven't written a business plan. I've pitched uh, investors. I've also pitched um, uh, angel investors. I've pitched uh, Silicon Valley. I've pitched. I'm trying to think who else. I've pitched banks. I've talked to banks. I actually, when I wrote that book, I interviewed banks to write in there about how they're not they're not lending any money to anybody. Uh, they're still they only lend money to people who have money. So if Warren Buffett needs to borrow money. They're going to lend to him because he has money. They're not lending to anybody else. Um, oh yes, Patrick. I saw that. I didn't get a chance to catch uh, Grant's uh, Grant's uh, scope and blab on the writing of the book. But again, I had to write this 225 page book, 65,000 word book. 
in three months. Three months. Most people can't, most, it'll take, I'm not saying most people as in to compare, but I'm telling you that it takes a lot of time to commit and to get in a flow state to be able to write. I wrote 65,000 words in three months because that was what I needed to do, right? And I had to write that. And so why don't, why does, why is the business plan, the traditional business plan is not necessarily what you need. What you need is to understand uh, the confines of your business. And I'll tell you this really quickly and I'm going to go back to the, motiv- the, to the momentum motivational piece. The first is, There are four S's, I call them, the four levels that you need to focus on as a small business owner. If you have these four levels, it increases your likelihood of being successful in the long term. Again, you got to figure out other things. Yes, Aziz, we're in the same area. We need to catch up again. It's been a while since we met, so I'd love to catch up with you and see if we can do some stuff together. Um, So real quick, these are the four S's. I call them structure, strategy, systems, and sales. Structure, strategy, systems, and sales. That's it. The structure is really simple. The structure is solving problems, right? People don't spend money because they want to. They spend money because they have a problem that they want to have solved. Plain and simple. If you have a problem, right, you value the solution to that problem more than you value your money. That's why you give money to somebody to do something for you. Whether it's doing your laundry, whether it's painting your house, whether it's parking your car, it doesn't matter what it is. Whether it's getting cable, you care about watching that television show more than you care about your money. Plain and simple. So that's why people spend money. So if you understand it, yes, thank you, Bita. Structure, strategy, systems, and sales. So structure is solving problems. Make sure you align whatever your idea is with the problem that you're going to solve. If you do that, you'll have a better chance of finding customers who want to give you money for your solution. So a lot of businesses go out of business because they don't have the customers first. They go they go they go they go the other way. Here's an example. You have you want you go you have an idea for something. You go open a store, right? And then you got to go find customers, but the whole time that you're spending finding customers, you still got to pay rent. You got to pay your employees. You got to pay inventory. You got to pay all that stuff. And so you're spending money coming out before you've gone and got people who's gonna give, who are going to give you money. So you've seen this now with, with, with uh, people are struggling with apps sometimes because they're, they're building apps. So they think it's something that, that, that works, but it doesn't really solve any particular problem or a problem that people are willing to spend money on. That's it. Exactly. People, customers vote with their feet and their dollars. And if you don't do that, you're, you're, you're playing a game, a, a game that you're going to lo- you may lose. And so the second one, as I say, struct- banks aren't lending. They're, they're not, no, dude, they're, you're right. The big dream. They're not lending to small. They're not lending to anybody. I, I, again, I've met with at least 10 different bank managers from some of the largest to the medium sized banks. Maybe credit unions are spending. But even then, it's still, it's still, you're jumping through hoops, right? And then you got to go through a place where you're factoring or maybe you're doing uh, your receivables. But even then, if you're doing that, you have revenue coming in. So you already have people coming in. If you're starting out as a startup, you can forget it. I'm not trying to discourage you and I'm not trying to tell you not to do, not to try. But I, I'm telling you right now, if you go and go to a bank and you go with all your information, your business plan, you will see that they will not give you money if you are just starting. They will say, come back when you have a customer, come back when you have some traction. That's usually what they're going to say. You know why? Because the bank is in, is, is in business to lend money to make interest money. That's it. And they're still not, they're not in the business of helping you live your life and your dreams. That's not it. So if, if, you, if, if you think they're trying to help you, they don't care. And the guy who's doing it, the bank manager, he's being, he's being evaluated by the performance of the loans. So if he's lending money to you and you're not paying, you, he's lending money to you and you're not paying it back, he loses his job. And he doesn't even know you. So why would he put his life and his family and his livelihood at risk? So that's why you have to, that's the position, that's the position you have to come from. You have to understand that. So the second one, I said structure is the first one. The second one is, is uh, strategy. Strategy is pricing. And I tell you guys I'm a prince of pricing and I, I do this for a reason. Because a lot of people that I've, I've dealt with from a small business perspective, people I've coached, people I've, who I've had as clients, they struggle with pricing. They don't, have an, they don't really have a methodology as to how they came up with their price. What they came up with was just a number that they pulled out of the air because they think that's what it's that's what it's worth. But you have to understand, a lot of times the price that you're actually offering to people is usually the value is usually exponentially more. So every time you give price, every time you give a price to somebody, you have to be be able to identify that everything has to be exponentially more, right? So what I tell what I tell people is you have to it has to be excellent exponentially more than what it is. So. If people, and, and when I tell people this, they say, well, I got to buy, people buy because of price, I got to give them a discount. How many How many of you, you can ask, answer if you want, but how many of you have given people discounts right off the top without even talking about anything else, right? Um, and and you, you basically just come in like, oh, I'm going to give you a discount for no, no apparent reason. You have to understand, price also anchors. 
So if you have a low price on something, people start thinking your product is inferior, your service is inferior. So if I go somewhere and say I do laundry and I, I, I'm going to a laundromat and I know that in order to, to dry clean my, my shirt, it's costing $2 in most places or $1.50 to $2 and somebody else is saying 50 cents, I start worrying if my clothes are going to get destroyed because I buy custom I buy custom shirts because I, I have long arms, I'm tall. So if, I, if, if you're telling me 50, 50 cents, you think you're doing me a favor. What you're doing is you're giving me a reason to doubt you. Because I'm thinking, I'm going to take my shirt to you. It's going to have holes in it. Moths are going to fly out of it. It's not going to be clean. How can you possibly compete with the person down the street charging four times as much and you're charging 50 cents? So it's the same thing with whatever it is that you're, whatever it is that you're selling. Your services, you have to realize my services have an have a intrinsic value. Um, yes, Patrick, low price sometimes equates to cheap product. Exactly. It actually costs you more. You're right. And what happens is you end up it's a race to the bottom. So if you're doing an, if you're in a product space, you end up going. It's a race to the bottom, and you're competing with the Amazons of the world. You're competing with the WalMarts of the world, and you wonder why these other smaller mom and pop stores are closing. As much as we want to hate Walmart, people are lining up at Walmart every time I go to Walmart. The place is packed all hours of the night. So the so as Patrick said earlier, people are voting with their feet and their dollars. So you can. You know, politically or, you know, um, patriotically, I get all that stuff. At the end of the day, people want to eat. They want to keep more money in their pockets. And they're going to they're gonna pay money if they see value in it. That's why when I talk to startups, you're like, this is this is green for the environment and this and that. They don't know. Most people don't care. They do, but not enough. Most people don't care enough. That's why they don't buy Priuses because Prius is $30,000. They go buy a car that's half that. That does the same thing. So you understand what I'm saying? So that's that's really that's what's really important. Um and and so so more importantly, so it's we got structure, we got structure, strategy with pricing, the importance of setting your pricing at a, at a at a at a high enough place so that you can actually make money, and also understanding the value you bring to that customer. Because if you understand the value you bring, then you're not going to second guess yourself. You're not going to worry about you know giving discounts. But more importantly, you're going to know the value you bring to your customer, and you'll be able to provide the service that makes sense. Because if you charge too low, if you charge your customer too low, you start to get, you get resentful. So you can, I know, you, I know this is true. We all do. We'll get we're like, why am I charging this, this, this fool a lot less, man? And then you want me to do this and want me to do that. You notice, ask yourself this question. Some of your customers and clients that, 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 you, that you've charged the least amount of money to, they're the ones who become the pain in the butt. Am I right? They're the ones who nickel and dime you. They complain. They're always arguing about the, the bill, looking at the fee, how much time, of, how much hours have you charged, Right. So we go structure strategy systems is basically finding people that finding people that you can leverage your time to. So you're not doing all the small nickel and dime stuff. That's getting a virtual assistant. That means you can get uh, you can also get a, um, a virtual assistant, or you can also go go after and get uh, what's the other person you can get? Uh, you can get a virtual assistant. You get an intern, right? And then the last one is sales. It's self-explanatory. You do things like Periscope. You do things like uh, Twitter. You do things like Facebook. And what you do is you continue. To go after that again, right? Um, I'm going to continue this again. I'm going to save this and I'm going to come back and finish the last one with sales.